So the last section in chapter 15 is 15.3, uh, Darwin presenting his case. So Darwin didn't originally intend on publishing his discoveries. It was a, he was kind of disturbed by what he found. Uh, he received a short essay from a man named Alfred Wallace, with essentially the same ideas. After he read this, he finished his work, and 18 months later published his book on the origin of species. So natural variation is an important thing that Darwin noticed. And natural variation is the difference among individuals of a species and is found in all types of organisms. We know now that it's not unusual to see plants yield different sized fruit, but at the time it was not as commonly recognized that there were variations. So we see different sized tomatoes, different sized, we even see different sized cows, uh, cows that produce more milk or less milk. All these variations are naturally occurring. And Darwin made great strides in his theories by studying the work of English farmers who used this variation to improve their crops and livestock. So these farmers noticed that there were better animals or better strains of um, uh, plants or crops to use, and they used those to breed for the next generation. Now, artificial selection is the process in which humans artificially select for breeding traits that they find useful. Now, nature provides the variations, but humans select the ones they find useful and continue to perpetuate them by continually breeding. Now, the struggle for existence means that members of each species can compete regularly to obtain food, living space, and other necessities of life. Fitness is the ability of an organism to both survive and reproduce in an environment. And adaptation is any inherited characteristic that increases an organism's chance of survival. So fitness is the ability to survive, and adaptation is something that allows for greater fitness. So if we look right here, survival of the fittest is the idea that individuals that are better suited to their environment survive and reproduce most successfully. So the most fit, the best adapted, survive and reproduce the best. Now natural selection is a result of survival of the fittest. The strong are selected to live, the weak are selected to die. Over time, Natural selection results in changes in the inherited characteristics of a population. These changes increase a species' fitness in its environment. Descent with modification is the idea that as each organism occupies a different niche, said organism will change over time. This is why organisms look different from their ancestors. The common descent is the principle that states that all living species, both living and extinct, derive from common ancestors. Darwin argued that things have been evolving for millions of years. Evidence for this can be found in the fossil record, the geographic distribution of species, homologous structures, and similarities in early development. The fossil record was viewed by Darwin to be a detailed record of evolution. By looking at the different layers in the stratified rock, Darwin argued you could watch evolution occur in sequence. Darwin argued that geographic distribution had an effect on the organism. He viewed organisms that were located in different areas but were very similar. He reasoned that they had originated from a common ancestor, but as time went on, they drifted further apart because they were separated by location. Scientists began to notice that there were similarities between the bones and vertebrates. While their form and function may be different, they still have the same essential bones and develop from the same clumps of cells in the embryos. Homologous structures are structures that have the same embryonic tissue origin, but have different mature forms. Vestigial organs are organs with little or no function, and the embryos of most vertebrates are so similar that they can barely be distinguished from one another.